The CEO of Bungie is getting absolutely roasted on social media right now. And this is because of a statement where they allegedly told remaining employees at the company that they had kept the right people to continue work on Destiny 2, which of course implies that the 100 employees that we now know of that were laid off were the wrong people to work on Destiny 2, at least according to the CEO in this, again, alleged statement. In today's video, we're gonna jump into this entire article written about this. It comes from IGN and the title is Bungie CEO claims layoffs were due to Destiny 2 underperformance. So let's jump right into this. In an internal town hall meeting addressing a Monday round of layoffs that impacted multiple departments, Bungie CEO Pete Parsons allegedly told remaining employees that the company had kept the right people to continue work on Destiny 2. Speaking to multiple current and recently laid off employees, IGN confirmed reports that Bungie took responsibility for the layoffs rather than laying them at the feet of parent company Sony, which again has become this really big point of contention. Do we blame Bungie? Do we blame Sony? Is it a combination of the two? As it stands right now, it would seem as though the majority of the blame does land on Bungie, but it also does feel like Sony had a small part in this. So let's continue reading here. Parsons told employees that the layoffs were largely due to underperformance of Destiny 2 over the last year, as well as lower than expected pre-orders for upcoming expansion, The Final Shape. So the game Destiny 2 is underperforming. It's not selling as well as it should be. And the pre-orders for The Final Shape also aren't meeting expectations. So Bungie naturally has to find ways to lower their costs, lower their spending. And we now know that their decision was to let go of roughly 100 employees, which if I'm being completely honest here is not like new practice in business. It definitely sucks for those that were laid off, but this is very common and happens in business. It's not like Bungie can just continuously pay employees without having the budget to do so. I feel like a lot of people choose to put their outrage potentially in the wrong place. It's very much okay to be upset at the CEO of calling the people that they kept the right people and the people that were let go the wrong people. That's totally not okay if that did happen, but actually cutting 100 people from the company due to not meeting your projected goals is common practice in business, unfortunately. And I know that a lot of us like to put that big price tag, $3.6 billion over Bungie's head and say that they can afford everything, that they could hire 100,000 employees if they wanted to. Really not the way it works in business. But I digress, let's go on to the next part. IGN can now independently confirm reports that the final shape has been delayed to June 2024 and Marathon has been internally delayed to 2025 after having been in development since 2019, which is crazy to think about. Both Marathon and Destiny 2 are being affected by this. Marathon's been under works for four years now, almost five years now, and it's getting pushed back. Now we're gonna look at what the employees had to say in regards to this. Employees were also told that Destiny 2 player sentiment was at an all time low. Sources tell IGN that this issue had been flagged to leadership repeatedly for months prior to the layoffs with employees begging for necessary changes to win players back. Now that one really hits deep. We have this group of people within the company begging management to do the necessary things in order to win players back and keep player retention only to have them be ignored. Now we don't have the exact specifics as to what this is and why, but if I had to guess, as a player that's been playing this game since the very beginning, we continuously are given new things every season and half or more than half of the new loot that we're given isn't even as good as the old loot in a game that is literally the genre is a looter shooter. The number one most important thing is that we need to have enticing good weapons and armor gear to chase for. Season after season after season for quite some time now, we've had the majority of new things introduced to the game be subpar. It feels like lately, if a new season comes out, there's maybe like two or three guns that I'm even interested in at all, which kills my playtime and I'm someone that wants to sink hundreds, if not thousands of hours every season, but I simply can't do so because there's nothing to chase for. There's no reason for me to do that. But Bungie continues to push the game in a much more casual direction, which is okay to some degree, I understand making the point of entry lower for people. I'm fine with that, honestly. I don't care how casual it is to begin your journey playing Destiny 2. What I do care about is keeping the players that have been here since the beginning, and you do so by making engaging content, engaging loot. And this is something that Bungie has been struggling with for quite some time now. The next part reads, one former Bungie employee recalled that they were repeatedly assured following the 2022 Sony acquisition of Bungie that there would be no layoffs and cited an item from a Sony quarterly report that claimed one 1.2 billion of the 4 billion acquisition was going explicitly towards staff retention, which is very interesting to actually get those numbers there. The next part reads, multiple employees confirmed that money was distributed to employees who were fully vested with money split into multiple payments over time and varying based on discipline and seniority. I hate to say it, but that means that some people out there cashed in some big checks for probably multiple millions of dollars, only to then just a little over a year later now have over 100 employees laid off. And while that does extremely suck for those that were laid off, that is still exactly
exactly how business works. It's not fair, but that is how business works. The next part reads, other employees also told IGN they felt especially frustrated with the layoffs given that the company had completed work on a brand new headquarters, more than double the size of its previous office, and likely a pricey upgrade in Bellevue, Washington, which is kind of a fair point. I mean, Bungie opens their huge new flashy headquarters while simultaneously not reaching their huge goals and then having to cut off 100 employees. Many said that imagine they didn't open up this new headquarters and instead kept those employees there, which obviously would be really good for those laid off. But unfortunately, as it stands right now, when it comes to game development, the majority of games are developed in a singular central location. There is obviously a lot of room for remote work and Bungie does do remote work to almost all the states in America now, I believe. But now that Bungie is expanding and trying to become a multiple IP game studio with having Destiny 2 and Marathon, they obviously needed to create a bigger headquarters to begin that expansion and that growth. So I don't necessarily blame Bungie for doing that because I mean, that was just their business plan was to diversify. They didn't want to have all their eggs in one basket. They don't just want to have Destiny 2 be their cash cow. They want to go multiple IPs so that way they can effectively in business like diversify their portfolio. They can have multiple potentially successful games, which means that if one of the games dies, they only lose a portion of the revenue versus right now, if like Destiny 2 died, they just lose everything. This is technically like a good business practice if you want to maintain wealth and grow. But like I said before, it does suck for those that were laid off. The next part reads, Parsons was criticized in some quarters for calling the layoffs a sad day at Bungie in a tweet which similarly angered several employees we spoke to. That tweet from Parsons, we did an entire video talking about that. And the next part reads, the exact number of those impacted is still nebulous, though some sources we spoke to suggested roughly around 100 employees. A number also reported by Bloomberg earlier today. Multiple employees claimed that internally, Bungie leadership has tried to obfuscate the numbers and departments of those impacted while discouraging employees from asking questions on these topics in company chats. Again, Bungie doesn't want to fan the flames here. They don't want to give out the numbers of how many they've let go. Because as much as it does suck for those that were let go, I do think there's an element of those at Bungie that also feel defeated in the fact that they didn't reach their goals and that they have to let go of 100 employees. It's kind of a lose-lose situation here. The next part reads here, IGN has now heard of layoffs impacting the community team, art, engineering, recruiting, legal, audio, QA, creative studios, and IT with impacts across both Destiny 2 and Marathon teams and including multiple members of the company's diversity committee and accessibility club. So basically from head to toe, every department lost a few employees to sort of shave off the cost of the company. Those impacted are receiving a minimum of three months of severance and Cobra health benefits, though other company benefits terminated immediately, which again, we could all be thankful for three months severance, especially during the holiday time. You know, all of these employees that were let go, they're gonna be getting paid pretty well as they get multiple months to try and find new work, which again, I'm not trying to downplay it, but I think a lot of us out there who have jobs that if we did get let go today, we would have absolutely zero severance can be thankful for this. I know I myself personally, if this YouTube channel died, YouTube is not paying me severance, which is why I need you out there watching to subscribe to the channel with notifications on and smash that like button. Let's get on to the next part here. Being deemed expendable hurts was the quote. Multiple employees expressed frustration about the layoffs, saying they felt that the decisions leading to the company's apparent money struggles were out of their hands, and that those who were laid off were being pushed for a problem that they largely did not cause. Unfortunately, that is how it works in business. Like you're the employee working for a big company, a big corporation. It's not directly your fault if the performance doesn't meet the standards that they're looking for. It's just the byproduct of that is that people are gonna be let go. And just as a side note, I hate being so reasonable and so logical during times like these because I know that there's just a ton of outrage out there. And I think that a lot of people just want me to shake my fist at the screen and get red in the face and say bungee bad for 20 minutes straight. But the reality is that I can kind of see both sides and understand there still is a lot of fault and a lot of blame for bungee management and things that they could do better from this. But the unfortunate reality is that things like this do happen. And we know that this is not only happening for Bungie, but for other game studios as well. So it's not like Bungie is unique in this or that Bungie is doing an exceptionally bad job. All the gaming studios right now are experiencing loss. And the only way they can recoup their losses is by letting employees go. Let's get on to the next part here. This quote reads, it's definitely weird being the one who is laid off based off the decisions and performances of people in departments you're not involved with. One impact employee told IGN, being deemed expendable hurts. Additionally, IGN has been told that a noticeable number of employees had been dismissed from the QA team in the weeks and months leading up to yesterday's layoffs. While the exact number is unknown, the number of departures over time were notable enough that the company's head of QA sent an email around to staff members addressing the situation. IGN has reviewed the email, which claimed the dismissals were not layoffs and not a result of cost cutting in any way, adding that if we ever did layoffs, we would be very upfront about it. Employees familiar with the situation told IGN that the dismissal 
this came alongside what felt like a growing crackdown on QA with increased job responsibilities and multiple people being placed on performance improvement plans for seemingly minor infractions. In 2021, IGN spoke to 26 current and former employees at Bungie about a pervasive toxic work culture at the Destiny 2 developer that at the time seemed to slowly be improving thanks to the ongoing efforts of employees at the ground level. However, earlier this month, we also reported on an ongoing lawsuit filed against Bungie by a former HR manager who claimed she was wrongfully terminated for reporting potential racial bias in the company. Which if you don't know, we fully reported on that story as well. We're on top of all the Destiny 2 news. And I want to hear your thoughts and ideas down in the comments below. This has become quite the crazy situation indeed. We shall see how Bungie navigates through these treacherous waters that they're going through right now. If you enjoyed the video, then click on the screen here to watch another one from the channel. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Later.